When the chemical buffer systems run out or they have if we've exceeded their limits, then we have to rely on physiological buffers. That is the respiratory and urinary systems and how they help and compensate and maintain acid-base balance. So first let's look at the rest respiratory contribution. In effect, we're adjusting again this equation. So if you think about if we exhale CO2 and water, we're effectively exhaling acid because as this side of the equation increases, so we have a high hydrogen ion concentration, so a low pH, that drives the equation to the left and then we'll just simply exhale the CO2 and thereby exhaling basically carbonic acid. And so we can change the pH simply by changing the CO2 levels in the blood. If I have high levels of CO2, that's going to drive the equation to the right and I make a bunch of hydrogen ions and therefore the pH goes down. If I have low levels of CO2, then that's going to drive the equation to the left and thereby removing hydrogen ions from the solution and thereby raising the pH. So I have chemoreceptors that are sensitive to changes in the partial pressure of CO2 in our blood, effectively changing the concentration of the CO2. So if the CO2 levels are too high, thereby making everything acidic, remember it's running to the right, adding hydrogen ions, I want to change my rate and depth of breathing and decrease it so I'm not adding so many CO2s or carbon dioxides to the blood. Whereas if the partial pressure of CO2 is too low, thereby removing hydrogen ions because we're making the equation drive to the left, I want to change my rate and depth of breathing and decrease it, thereby I can increase the amount of CO2 to balance this equation out. Now the respiratory system can also compensate for changes in other acids. So let's say you're out running and exercising, you have a buildup of lactic acid from that. Well, lactic acid being an acid adds hydrogen ions to our blood. And that means our pH is too low and we have a huge number of hydrogen ions in solution. So in a sense, this side of the equation increases, that drives the equation to the left. And so that means I'm going to make a lot of CO2 and water when those hydrogen ions combine with bicarbonate. And then again, I can exhale that CO2 and water, effectively removing an acid and thereby raising the pH again. Now, renal contributions are also important in controlling acid-base balance. The renal contributions take a little bit longer to kick in, uh, but they last have a longer lasting effect. And so we can see a lot of different things going on here. One is we've did with uh, secretion in the urinary system. Hydrogen ions can be secreted to change pH um, and thereby removing them from the plasma in exchange for sodium ions. So this is actually an, an antiport system where we're actually pumping the hydrogens out back into the filtrate in exchange for sodium ions moving in and thereby I'm adding acids to my filtrate removing them from uh, my blood plasma now and that of course is going to end up raising blood pH now those hydrogen ions are also going to be used to actually help reabsorb filtered bicarbonates and remember bicarbonates are not able to move across the apical membrane of the um, kidney tubules. There's no proteins there to be able to move bicarbonates across. So we've got to do it in a roundabout way. And those hydrogen ions that are secreted can combine with the bicarbonates, form carbonic acid, and then that can become water and carbon dioxide. And we can move carbon dioxide and water across that membrane. And then the carbon dioxide and water will become carbonic acid once inside the cell and then dissociate to bicarbonates and hydrogen ions. The hydrogen ions again are secreted, whereas the bicarbonates are going to be reabsorbed along with sodium in back into the extracellular fluid and then into the blood. So basically for every hydrogen that I secrete, I get to reabsorb a bicarbonate. And so that is an effect of kind of a one-to-one -one relationship. So I'm not only am I removing hydrogen ions, I'm increasing bicarbonates. And so that all is about raising blood pH that way. 
Another way to raise blood pH is make new sources of bicarbonates, and I can see that down here. If I have a lot of CO2 in my blood, that CO2 then is going to get into those tubule cells and form carbonic acid. Now the carbonic acid will dissociate to hydrogen ions and bicarbonates. And so I can take those hydrogen ions and secrete them again, and then take the bicarbonates and reabsorb them. So now I have new sources of bicarbonates to add and thereby helping neutralize the acid in the blood with having those bicarbonate buffers. Uh, I can also get new bicarbonates through the um, amino acid glutamine. When glutamine is broken down, it forms either into ammonia or ammonium and the NH4, the NH3, and then um, bicarbonates. Now the bicarbonates then I can reabsorb back into the blood, again adding new sources of bicarbonates, more buffers, and then that can help neutralize acids and help raise blood pH. The other thing notice here too is that with those hydrogens being secreted, as long as there's bicarbonates in the filtrate, those hydrogens that I secreted are going to be used to reabsorb bicarbonates. I'm eventually going to run out of bicarbonates. About the time I get to the um, collecting ducts, I'm out of bicarbonates. They've all been reabsorbed. So any hydrogens that are reabsorbed from that point, or excuse me, any hydrogens that are secreted from that point forward end up being part of my filtrate and part of the urine. Or any hydrogens that are formed from the um, CO2 or in the glutamine actually ends up being secreted. And so those hydrogen ions are going to accumulate in the blood. And I can add those to phosphates or to ammonia to help neutralize them so my pH and my filtrate doesn't get too low. Now I can also lower blood pH by simply reabsorbing less bicarbonates or secreting less hydrogen ions. So if I want to raise blood pH, I'm going to reabsorb more bicarbonates, secrete more hydrogens. If I want to lower blood pH, then I'm simply going to reabsorb less bicarbonates and secrete more, or excuse me, secrete less um, hydrogen ions. And that's how I can adjust um, the pH of the blood using the kidneys. So next we're going to, now that we have all the intricacies of our acid-base balance, we're going to look at see where we've got imbalances and what happens there.